Hey everybody, I'm here with Mr. Justin from Secret Web Miniatures, one of uh, the most fantastic miniature painters that I personally know. And, uh, well, thank you. And, and one of the contestants here for the Crystal Brush 2016. Uh, so I gotta know, uh, what did you do to get kind of psyched up for 2016? Uh, come last year, that was actually a big part of that. Um, uh, being able to see the models is always an inspiration. Uh, the entries that I brought this year, a large part of the uh, inspiration for those was being here last year. Uh, one of the entries I actually have in the cabinet this year, uh, my chibi entry, uh, exists only because I had conversations with some of the incredible painters that were here. Uh, I can thank Ben Comments. Thanks, Ben, uh, for the inspiration for my chibi entry. Uh, more or less planned it here with him and some other folks around talking. Uh, of all the stuff that you brought out this year, uh, what was your favorite? Uh, that I brought, uh, certainly my historical vehicle entries tends to be the case for me, being a vehicle guy. Uh, so I brought um, a 1941 Chevy truck that's out here now. I'm really happy with the piece, uh, excited to bring it out. Um, more more excited, one of the great things about an event like this is because you have this incredible talent from around the world and the most amazing models from around the world is the opportunity to get feedback from those guys. So I can you know, sit down with guys like Carol and Ben and Jen and Jessica and Ann Forster and be like, hey, what do you think? What would you do differently? How would you do next year? And that is really where a lot of the time the inspiration for my next project comes from is I, I take their feedback on what I did this year and I think, yeah, I could do better next year on a piece like this. So most of my entries for next year are uh, probably uh, going to wind up uh, inspired tonight when we're all sitting around talking. Is there anybody over there in the case that uh, you particularly are pulling for to be the uh, the big winner of the, of the week? Uh, I haven't looked this morning. I don't know entries that came in last night, but last night when I was looking at uh, the piece, I think it was called Atonement, a uh, book, an angel, the, the thing, and the, oh my god, I'm sure you guys are going to see it. It's Oh my god, it's amazing. And yeah, at least when I was looking last night, I was really pulling for that piece. Really amazing work. That's, that's fantastic. Which, uh, which category do you think is the one that you would, uh, perf that you're glad that you're not part of this time around? Oh, Fantasy Large. <laughs> Hands down, Fantasy Large. Uh, it tends to be the two most competitive, uh, competitive categories here tend to be uh, large entries and diorama. And uh, man, I've been avoiding those categories only because I know the talent coming to them. But uh, looking again, I don't know. I'll have some ideas. I'm going to try and find a way to push my way into that category next year. Well, I'm glad we had a chance to talk, and uh, I'm super glad or super excited to see you tomorrow at the award ceremony, and I hope you do well. Thank you much. All right. We'll see you later, sir. Cheers. Right again at Crystal Brush 2016 uh, with Matt DiVitrio. How you doing, sir? Doing great. Uh, a amazing artist that we love to see all of his stuff every year, and uh, we want to ask you a couple of questions about your participation and experience of Crystal Brush. Um, now you had a bunch of really good entries in this year, and uh, is there anything, any one of them that actually jumped out as like your favorite to work with, something that made you, you know, really got inspired by? I think uh, my favorite entry this year was the one I entered into historical category. Uh, the piece is called Homecoming, and uh, it's a knight, and it's the moment he sees his home again for the first time after being way at war for many years. Oh, excellent. His field is gone fallow and grown, overgrown. There's his implements have rusted, uh, but it's that moment where he gets to lay down his sword and pick up the plow again. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic. Uh, my now. I'm particularly biased. Uh, I love Dark Age myself, as it is, you know, my, that's my baby. Yeah. Uh, but you know, one of your entries, uh, Mongo's Boo Boo. Oh, right, yeah, um, Mongo gets a Boo Boo. Easily my favorite entry that you did this year, and uh, one of my favorites in the whole show. Again, I'm biased. Uh, what, uh, what jumped out at you that made you want to do Mongo's Boo Boo? Well, it's an idea I actually have had for years, ever since I got the model, like at Gen Con, like something like five or six years ago. But I've just never had the time to really develop it, and it's kind of a good thing because uh, I've developed so much as a painter since then, and also as a uh, you know a, a sculptor or baser. And uh, it's interesting that you bring that one up because that one and Homecoming are kind of linked in a way because the, the work on the bases of those pieces, like it's all handmade and custom. Like I didn't buy any, like the leaves on um, my blackberry bushes for Homecoming, they're made out of uh, cigarette paper. And oh wow. They're all custom made, they're not brass etch or anything because brass etch is too thick for uh, being in scale. And I came up with, for Mongo Gets a Boo Boo, I came up with ways to make uh, trash bags and to make uh, tin cans that were crushed, uh, cigarette butts, all of these techniques to uh, add these elements to the base. Um, and also, it, in both of these pieces, I was trying to make a chaotic 
system, so, uh, scene that was chaotic, which is much, much more difficult than to make something that's ordered and clean. To make something that is dirty and chaotic, but also make it look genuine, yeah. this is a much more difficult than to make something that's clean and ordered. And, uh, and then with Mongo, it's, uh, you know, man-made things. And with uh, Homecoming, it's natural materials and plants and uh, that sort of thing. So I was trying to work on my techniques for doing both of these aspects. Oh, that is awesome. Uh, there was a lot of really, really good competition uh, this year. The case always is filled, and every year it yeah, seems so to scale good. up just a little bit more. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, was there any single piece that you really kind of are looking at, uh, obviously other than your own, that are uh, that you kind of think that is going to do really well? That it's going to you know that kind of blew your socks off when you were looking at the case the first time around. It's so hard to choose just one piece this year. I mean, we had just so many of my just. Almost all of my favorite miniature painters in the world were here this year, and uh, like it's so hard to choose just one. I have to say, uh, Sergio Calvo Rubio's piece was amazing. Uh, his painting was just like so spectacular. And then uh, I, I have four favorites this year. It's like Fabrizio Russo's work was also amazing in many uh, the same ways, and he sculpted that piece from scratch as well as painting it. Yeah. Which is something that uh, I'm going. I'm learning to sculpt right now. It's something I would like to do like far in the future, kind of the pie of the sky sort of thing. And you know, Ben Comets' diorama is just like uh, so well planned out and like works and so on so many different levels. And it's very creative. And then, of course, Atonement by Michael Contreras and Kiro Cosimos. Like, I've been, I've been following their work for years, and they're just like, so, they make some of the, the most, like, touching and uh, uh, emotive sort of pieces. So, I, I mean, I couldn't choose my favorite. I, I had to give them all tens, you know? <laughs> just, they're just so good. And uh, also, uh, Aaron Lovejoy's uh, diorama, I thought it was like a, you know, just... Like I couldn't find any flaws in it. I just I loved his piece as well. Well, that is fantastic, and uh, we'll hope we're going to see you here in the award ceremony very soon up there. And uh, I hope we get to call your name. Yeah, well, I hope so too. Right. Thank <laughs> you very much. I'll be back next year too. Excellent. I am talking to the fabulous and talented Jessica Rich. Say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we just wanted to take a second and ask you a couple of questions about this year's competition. Uh, what? Uh, how many pieces did you bring this time? I only got to do one. Um, I'm happy with it, but not what I wanted to do as usual. As as usual, you're always you're always your worst critic. I am. Or harshest critic, I should say. Definitely. So uh, you've seen your other entries in the categories, and you know things you're up against. Uh, is there anything in particular that stood out to you as you know kind of your number one contender for your top spot? I try not to pay a whole lot of attention to what's in my own category. <laughs> Um, so honestly, for me, uh, the piece that blows my mind is Contreras. Atonement, I look at that, I feel things when I see that, and for me, I'm like, that needs to win. That's cool. Well, there's a lot of really, really good stuff in there, and the competition is very, very steep. Uh, obviously, you said that that's your, that's your number one contender spot. Uh -huh. Is there anything else that jumped out at you that you're like, this has got to come home with a trophy? Uh, yeah, um, actually, Aaron Lovejoy's piece, um, because uh, I've seen him grow over the past two years as a painter, and oh my god, like, he's just, he's stepped up so much that it makes me proud. <laughs> Is there anything out there for uh, you know aspiring artists or anyone else that uh, might want to come in for Crystal Brush 2017 that you would want to tell them and get them ready for? Since obviously they're going to be going up against you next year. <laughs> um, my biggest uh, piece of advice is that if you're going to be entering into Crystal Brush, it's becoming very Euro, and there's an art movement happening here in the States. You need to make a piece with feeling. There needs to be something that's evocative, artistic, and something that you feel passionate about as opposed to pandering to an audience. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you at the award ceremony tomorrow. Yay!